In this video, we're going to talk about how to draw the Lewis structure of the chlorate ion ClO3-. So let's begin by adding the number of valence electrons in this polyatomic ion. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, oxygen has six, and we need to multiply by three because we have three oxygen atoms in this polyatomic ion. And the net charge is minus one, so we're going to add one electron to that. 3 times 6 is 18, and 7 plus 18 is 25, 25 plus 1 is 26. So this is the number of valence electrons that we have in this structure. Now, we could use this number to calculate how many electrons or lone pairs will be on the central chlorine atom. So let's make a list of the multiples of 8. What we want to do is we want to choose the highest multiple of 8, just under 26. And so that's going to be 24. If we subtract 26 by 24, it will give us 2. So this tells us that we're going to have two electrons, or one lone pair, on the central chlorine atom. So let's draw the Lewis structure. So we have Cl, and then we have the lone pair, on the chlorine atom, and we're going to put the three other oxygen atoms around it. Now, chlorine is an element in the third row of the periodic table, which means that it can have what is known as an expanded octet. That is, it can have more than eight electrons in its outer shell. So it doesn't have to obey the octet rule. So the octet rule won't help us here. Instead, when you come across situations like this, where you have an element in the third row or below, like sulfur, chlorine, phosphorus, you can get more than four bonds. And to find out the best Lewis structure, you need to minimize the formal charge on the central element. You want the formal charge to be zero. That will give you the most stable Lewis structure. By the way, there's many ways in which you can draw the Lewis structure of chlorine, but not all of them are equally stable. Some are more stable than others. But if you want the most stable Lewis structure, you want the formal charge on a central element to be close to zero, if not zero, um, close to zero as possible. Thus, here's the formal charge formula, or at least a simplified version of it. The formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the bonds and dots on that element. Chlorine has seven valence electrons. It's in group 7A. It's, an, it's a halogen. Now we know that chlorine has one lone pair or two dots and we want the formal charge to be zero. In order for that to happen, what should be the value of B in this equation? Well, let's do some algebra. So this is going to be zero equals seven minus B minus two. If we subtract 7 by 2, we're going to get 5. In order for 5 minus b to be equal to 0, b has to be equal to 5. So to get a formal charge of 0, we need 5 bonds around the central chlorine atom. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now with this structure, the formal charge on chlorine is going to be 0. Now the next thing that we need to do is fill up the oxygen atoms with lone pairs. Oxygen likes to have eight electrons. It's in the second row of the periodic table, so it's going to obey the octet rule. That is, it's not going to have more than eight electrons. So anytime oxygen has two bonds, it's going to have two lone pairs, and it's going to be neutral in charge. But when oxygen has one bond, it's going to have three lone pairs, and it's going to have a negative charge. So to confirm the negative charge, we could use the formal charge equation. The valence electrons of oxygen is 6. In this structure, this oxygen has one bond, but it has three lone pairs, which is six dots. So it's 6 minus 7, thus we have a negative 1 formal charge. And so we can see why the overall charge on the chlorate polyatomic ion is minus 1, is because of this oxygen atom. All the other 
atoms in that structure is neutral in charge. So this right here is the most stable Lewis structure that we can draw. Let me show you another Lewis structure that is less stable. For instance, we could take the two electrons in this pi bond and move it to that, to that oxygen atom, and we could do the same thing here. If we did that, we would get a structure that looks like this. Each oxygen atom will have a single bond. And notice that we have eight electrons around the chlorine atom. Two, four, six, eight. So in this example, chlorine is obeying the octet rule. But that doesn't mean that's the best thing. As we can see in this example, each oxygen atom has a negative formal charge. And the formal charge on chlorine, using the formula, it has seven valence electrons. It has three bonds, two dots. So seven minus five is two. So chlorine has a two plus charge in this Lewis structure. Note that the overall charge is still the same. If you add two and three negative one values, two plus negative three is still negative one. So the overall charge is still the same. Thus we have charge balance. So this is still an acceptable Lewis structure. However, it's not the most stable Lewis structure due to the separation of charge. This Lewis structure, the charges have been minimized. Here, there's so many charges in this Lewis structure that it's not very stable. So whenever you have charge separation, you have a, a resonance structure that is less stable. So both of these structures are resonance structures, but this is the most stable resonance structure. So this is going to be the major resonance contributor. In short, this is the best Lewis structure for the chlorine ion.